Crossfire Productions presents The 1993-24th Annual World Championship Great Arcade of Ferndale Cross-Country Kinetic Sculpture Race. Kinetic Madness! Humboldt County, nestled on the northern coast of California, home of the world's oldest and largest living trees. These natural skyscrapers, many towering beyond 300 feet, provide a redwood canopy for some of North America's most exotic and alluring scenery. This unique setting has become a mecca for artists dreamers, and creative thinkers worldwide. The city of Ferndale, California, birthplace of the world-famous Kinetic Sculpture Race and the perfect setting for some of California's classic Victorian architecture. The glorious founder, Hobart Brown, who, in the year 1969, bravely created the world's first kinetic sculpture, when a simple tricycle he was building for his young son grew uncontrollably to monumental proportions. From its conception, the same year man walked on the moon, this fledgling event grew to the point in 1972 that the kinetic sculpture race attracted spectators and participants from all over the world. They came in droves from distant lands and across the street to see for themselves some of the world's most ungainly, exotic, strange, and unusual contraptions to ever move down a public thoroughfare. The race began as a quick jaunt down Main Street, then it mutated and became the three-day, 38-mile grueling test of man and machine over land, water, and mud that we today call the Kinetic Sculpture Race. As with every piece of artwork, it starts with a concept, an idea, or in this case, it starts with a crawdad, a crustacean, 
a crayfish. Here, Dwayne Flatmo explains to Tim Richter the anatomy of his mechanical craw dude. Many bicycles have given up their life to create some of these machines. The craw dude created from lightweight materials such as aluminum could water the mouth of any Bayou family. It takes many, many friends getting together, lots of tools, lots of equipment, much imagination and teamwork, teamwork, teamwork to create from scratch, from a drawing, from a concept, one of these beautiful machines. Along with the heat, you gotta have a little bit of cooling to bring it all together into what we call a kinetic sculpture. Now, we take you inside the secret walls of the official kinetic laboratory at Yakima Products. No crash dummies allowed. Here, Ken Beidelman is constructing the non-patented rotating head. For which sculpture? Well, it's a secret. We can't tell you that. Why do these people do it? Why do they invest so much time, blood, sweat, and tears? For the glory. That's why. Here, the world's only crustacean dentist constructs a pair of craw dentures to place in the mouth of the formidable craw dude. Now some might say that a kinetic sculpture causes a slight parking problem. But that doesn't bother Dwayne any. He just chases the offenders away. Please, don't tell anyone. We are now back at the secret official kinetic laboratories of Yakima Products, located at, uh, oh yeah, it's a secret. Here on the walls you can see many, many remains from races past, including the helmets from the Nightmare of the Iguana. It's a dirty job, but somebody's got to do it. It takes blood, sweat, and tears, willingness to risk one's life, precision engineering, and a lot of trial and error to create your chance, your shot at a small piece of the glory. Hey, who put that there? Cut it off. We didn't need it anyway. Excess weight is not something you want on a kinetic sculpture. Hey, do you got any duct tape? Here, June Moxon is putting some touches on her flysicle. That has been entered into the 1993 Kinetic Sculpture Race. Welding and torching and torching and welding and welding and torching in June. I certainly hope you're going to clean up that mess. We sp I spent until 1 o'clock last night cleaning the shop, and this was all spotless. And I know it's Dwayne. I know Here we show you revenge, kinetic style. Yeah, you overdid it. Rise above it. You overdid it. Rise above it. Oh, you went too far. Hey. <laughs> That's a good sound. That's a good sound, huh? <laughs> well. Comfortable, non-crash dummy tested seating is always necessary on a kinetic sculpture. In view of the fact you're going to spend three days in it, pedaling your heart out. The Yakima Quack, testing for steep uphill grade that is inevitable in any kinetic sculpture race. Aerodynamic streamlining is very, very important due to the fact you'll be traveling at such high speeds in these fantastic machines. And of course, you will need defensive equipment. I've never done one by myself before, so this is a real challenge for me. Are you, are you going to ace it this year? Yes. <laughs> it looks like that's a, a personal thing. That you it is definitely a personal thing. I'm going to ace it no matter what this year. <laughs> Thank you.
And just so everyone looks ducky for the big day, it's one last trip to the beauty salon for the Yakima Quack, because as we all know, it's not how you feel, darling. It's how you look, and you look marvelous. Has Razuli been around here? Is this Razuli's work? I find a cotter pin and no one knows where it came from. Oh my god, it could be. Is Razuli a lurking about? Are you missing a cotter pin? No, we don't want that one. Extra. It's an extra. Ah, false alarm, false alarm. It needs to be it's dress rehearsal time now. The first time I heard the name Yakima Quacks, I thought it was a group of doctors from Washington. But it seems these guys really have their ducks in a row. Testing out the machine before race day is very important because you don't want any embarrassing moments in front of the crowd. These have been retrofitted to be ducks. We added a, a big mother, which is a two-seater, and uh, now we're going as Yakima Quacks. And we actually started this as an in-house project here at the company five months ago. And it's, it's, it's finally coming together. But it's, it's always the same thing. It's down to the last day we're finally going to make it. How many people were involved in construction? Uh, all of us, which is about, there's 16 people on the team and it's taken every one of us to put it together. And a lot of other people that are not part of the team are also working on other things like costumes and all the other stuff it takes to make this happen. What's your prediction for starting Saturday? What I'd are we say, gonna do? I, we're gonna do great. I don't know about the weather, but uh, hey, when the, the race rule is if it rains, the race is held in the rain. That's just the way it goes. Tears, ladies and gentlemen, because I am about to introduce the first runner-up and the second first runner-up who will not fade away into obscurity but will follow the Queen and be Rutabaga royalty throughout the Kinetic Sculpture Race the rest of the year and all eternity. Oh, mercy, 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 I won! I can't believe it! It's Those rutabagas are now going for a buck and a quarter. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our first, first runner-up for 1993 Rutabaga Queen is Pictoria! <laughs> the second first runner-up. Ted Suggs finishes these kinetic medals just before race day. Day one, May 29th, 1993. The day we've all been waiting for. What's happening, Darren? Well, good morning. We're getting ready for the race, of course, the race of the year. Here in Humboldt County, the great cross-country kinetic sculpture race. Exactly. 
exactly what time is it? Uh, just exactly what time is it? It's uh, not too far from race time. Uh, the uh, the official time. One of these is going to tell. Me. Well, it's not important yet. Uh -huh. The hider. This is the one that counts. It's 929. I can run three times faster than any man. Our thanks to Bob Pusey and Calistoga Water, whose sponsorship and support is indispensable to the gathering and racing of these varied and a sundry contraptions. Plus, kinetic racers and fans really love their Calistoga. Calistoga Water, the official fuel of the kinetic sculpture race. We've seen them go. Now let's see them stop. It's the brake test. The next hurdle on their way to faraway Ferndale. You're going to pedal as fast as you can. You hear them whistle down there. You're going to step on the brakes. All right, there's a dime down there. Stop on the dime. Get the nine cents change. Okay, you ready? Oh! The brake test is in accordance with rule number to be or not to be, Captain Rogers' rule of high order. One of them saying you must have operational and functional brakes and they must stop your sculpture as well. That is not to be confused with uh, 2C or not 2C, Mom's high anxiety rule, or 201A, which is all sculptures must have a teddy bear. What's this, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? Uh, whoa, Donatello, check it out! Uh, no, this is Tortuga Del Mar in the brake test. Whoa! Cowabunga, dude! Water! Emergency triangle! Teddy bear! Tell you what, I'm gonna, let, I'm gonna let you go for now. But at the next pit stop, you have to have a fuzzy wuzzy teddy bear. A fuzzy teddy bear? A real teddy bear, okay, you ready? Only in kinetic sculpture racing is this form of metamorphosis possible. Last year, these Yakima quacks were melded together in one lower form of life known as Nightmare of the Iguana. But over the year, between then and now, they have evolved into the higher form of the Yakima quacks. Here's Mother Duck and all her baby ducks. <laughs> Quackity quacks don't talk back. Triangle flares, water, water bucket. Water bucket's yellow, but the teddy bear's in it. You have water, drinking water? I have it right here. Okay. Disappearing oh. <laughs> at. Ta -da! The number one rule is all sculptures must be people-powered. No pulling, pushing, paddling, or their propulsive method is allowed except by official pit crews and pilots. Stored energy is allowed for non-propulsive purposes only, i.e. big, loud, boombox-type stereos. It is legal to get assist from water, wind, sun, gravity, and friendly extraterrestrials if introduced to the judges prior to the race. What do you think about the race today? Are you all ready? I'm ready. <laughs> Always ready for the Kinetic Sculpture Race, but how's the royalty doing, do you think? We're going to hog tight grandma later. Ah! <laughs> that whistle announces Rule 201A. All sculptures must have overnight equipment and some other stuff while traveling the course. This includes one pilot-sized sleeping bag correctly sized for each pilot's body, one toothbrush, preferably clean, one copy of the Kinetic Sculpture Race rules protected in a transparent plastic bag that you can see through. Some sunscreen's a real good idea, and since mothers are discouraged from running alongside the racers, they must carry a comforting item of psychological luxury, no smaller than a restaurant coffee cup, and no larger than a Buick. All right, very clever, very good. 
sobriety test. Arms out to your side. Okay, feet together. Close your eyes. Left forefinger to your nose. You got it! <laughs> As in any good race, there must be a hero and a villain. Let me tell you just one thing, my friend. It's a sad, sad day when someone like myself can be impelled with minuscule improprieties against my good name and character. Well, I'm the only honest pilot in this race, and I'm not even in it anymore. Minuscule improprieties? Okay. Well, this is Grandpa's Flying Machine, quite possibly sponsored by nearly every single bar in Humboldt County, which brings to mind rule number eight, or drank, the consumption of alcoholic beverages or use of controlled substances by any pilot or pit crew member while still on the course shall result in instant banishment. Pilots should realize that the consumption of alcohol during the race ain't nice and is unsightly in the eyes of spectators who exalt kinetic sculpture race people with awe and wonderment, and it's also against the law. Violation of this rule shall cause extreme Extreme measures to be taken by strict race officials on all alleged violators. The same is true for finding any alcoholic beverage on or in a sculpture or a pilot. Pilots must bear in mind that banishment for this violation is a violation of kinetic honor. Okay, either hand, either no, go. Okay, fine, pass. Uh, teddy bear. One here, one there. Eye protection. Eye protection. Eye preserver. Eye preserver. Teddy bear eye preserver. All right. <laughs> This is the entry from our Navy's finest. This is the SS Nads. Go Nads, go! Now let's see if those Nads can stop. Uh, not real good, guys. Not real good. Rule 4X. No one shall involve themselves in incidents of kicking, biting, scratching, or fisticuffs. Anyone engaging in such outrageous activities is not honored but disgraced. So far, so good. It's been a whistle, that's all I can say. Now, here's a few extra rules for those of you who are really into regulations. Not necessarily in order, here we go. Rule 1D, your two official sculpture license plates must be on display on both sides of your vehicle as to be visible to checkpoint officials, exalted timer persons, spectators, your own vanity, and your beloved TV crews. Then there's Captain Robert's rule of high order. You must have some safety equipment, including but not limited to a two-gallon pail, a flare, a horn, a front light, a back light, and brakes that work. All right, all right. Rule number three, pit crews must consist of humans only. No farm animals, extraterrestrials, Klingons, or Romulans are allowed. Then there's rule number 2C or not to see mom's high anxiety rule, making certain that you have the ability to get out of that machine in case of any impending emergency. Well, costumes are important, but I do believe that this young man has overjumped his boundaries. Okay, so he's not ugly, but his mom sure dresses him funny. Rule number four, the honk and pass law. Those honked upon must yield the right of way to faster moving sculptures wishing to pass because it's not nice to hog the road. Rule 602B, the garlic pope ruling. No gadgets, skis, snowshoes, board, or blown fuel injected 427 Chevy engines attached to your feet will be considered part of your sculpture. Bang! Emergency exit! Out! Uh, Out! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Okay, for those of you really into regulation, here's a few more rules. Rule number seven and a half, the agony of defeat law, the no towing rule. A sculpture must negotiate the course without assistance by any motorized vehicle, including Grandma's Buick, because that means that there is inferior engineering involved here, or you might be just plain lazy. Either way, you've got to go back to the drawing board. You're out of the race. Better luck. See you next year.
Rule number nine, in case of rain. So what? We race anyway. Rule number 901, the mom rule. If a pilot is pregnant and in labor, that pilot may be excused for a reasonable length of time, about an hour or so, without penalty. However, the pilot must bring back a 8x10 color glossy photo for publicity purposes, and the baby may be carried in the barnacle class on the sculpture. Now, the supremely exalted rule number 10. It is mandatory that all sculpture pilots, pit crew members, officials, spectators, law enforcers, communicators, volunteers, bears, cats, dogs, farm animals, ferrets, crocodiles, extinct beasts, and everyone else must have great fun and put a great effort into it. For such craziness as this keeps us all sane. If you insist on being a grumpy racer and not having fun, you may declare diplomatic immunity since you are surely from another planet and you will not be cited maybe by these overly excited officials for that infraction but we do reserve the right to cite you anyway why because we can This is it, that high and exalted moment, the start of the 1993 Kinetic Sculpture Race. So, gentlemen, start your, uh, what do you call, uh, oh, you guys just go, will ya?
So our intrepid racers leave downtown Arcata over Country Road on the first leg of their journey and to their first hurdle, the Sand Dunes of Manila, otherwise known as Dead Man Drop. And now it's time for the full duck roster. That's Mother Duck and uh, Gooey Duck, Darling Duck, Lucky Duck, Dirty Duck, Louie Duck, and last but not least, Ugly Duck. And up and coming, it's the Glory Hogs. This is Eulika Express. That's right, Eulika Express. This is Witchcraft. Witchcraft? That crap. That's Witchcraft. And this is American Gladiators, formerly known as Robocroc. These are cows. We have no idea what that is, but it does move. And this here is the Rabid Aquabat number four, pulling up to the dunes. A lot of hard work and preparation are necessary for the grueling trip over the sand dunes of Manila. Let's see if we can get this on the right track now, gentlemen. And the right track it is. Here's an example from Craw Dudes climbing the hill and keeping that tension. Don't lose it, fellas. The army might want to buy that thing when you're done. It's scary. Here's another way of doing it. Of course, these two gentlemen have not lost ace status because they are still on their sculpture. Didn't say which part of the sculpture they were supposed to be on. If you're thinking that you've got to be in shape for this, you're probably right. Because these guys are sure putting a lot of effort forth to get that sculpture up that slimy hill and down Dead Man's Drop. This is hot stuff taking her on down the Dead Man's Drop, which uh, today could probably be called Dead Man's Slop. What a slide it is for hot stuff. Here, the swan song takes the drop. This is Plum Crazy. And this here looks like somebody lost a Volkswagen and gained a sculpture. Ah, oh, these ducks, aren't they prolific? They're kind of hogging the whole show, but a hog, that's a whole nother sculpture. And this, of course, is Theodore Thunderbritches. It seems these ducks are just about everywhere. Well, there are seven of them. However, waiting in the bushes somewhere, I'll bet you there might be a duck hunter trying to reduce their population. I think we found him, the duck hunter in the bushes. Look out, ducky. Uh, what got some kills, but I know some wounded ones are going that way. They're moving slow. I got, I've got a good day going so far. What kind of ducks are they? They're big. Hey, hey, this is a family show. Come on. Of course, one thing about the terrain we call Dead Man's Drop is it does have a healthy, and I do mean healthy, mosquito population. Which brings us to one of the specialized jobs of a pit crew member, remove those healthy mosquitoes from kinetic racers. Now here's an example of engineering. The craw dudes down Dead Man's Drop. These machines must be constructed so they can go over any kind of terrain, land, sea, water, and everything in between. And now the racing stats as they stand. This is weird. In first place, we have a swan followed by a chili pepper and a mosquito hawk. Go figure. Compared to all that sand, this must be the easy part. The Samoa Bridge leading into Eureka.
Now this sculpture is called Infantile Effort. And I just wish you guys would grow up. This guy zigged when he should have zagged. And this one will go in any salad great. The kinetic kidney bean with eight years on the race. They came from out of town. Way out of town. They're getting closer and closer to the finish line for day one of the kinetic sculpture race 1993. The sculptures now are passing in front of downtown Eureka's Ingemar Club. Is he supposed to be able to do that? This is Dragon Boat, number 132. Little wheel wobble technology there. This is the entry from Sunny Bray School. This is the Carrot Chariot. This is Sushi, or more like see-through Sushi. And this is Melvin, returning this year dressed up as a mouse. This sculpture gets a little rooting from a youthful onlooker. Oh, it's lonely out there at the top, or in the middle, or wherever he is. This is a courteous sculpture named After You. No, After You. Oh, please, After You. I wonder if these things come with a warranty. Wear and tear can be a real bear. This one just lost a foot. And following that yellow brick road, this is the Munchkin Kin. A day doesn't go by that it doesn't rain on your parade. Which brings to an end, day one. Time now for day two, the day we all get a little wet. We leave the Bayshore Mall, passing through Eureka over regular streets to Fields Landing, where we enter the Humboldt Bay and the man-eating clams on our way to rest and relaxation at beautiful Camp Calistoga. Looks easy, right? Wrong. Uh, four egg McMuffins and uh, four orange juices. That's how the bruiser orders his breakfast. All right, let's see your teddy bear. Mighty. Teddy, who's running this show? <laughs> teddy bear is fucked. Let me knock off. Got to see your teddy bear. Teddy bear. Something like a teddy bear. No, no, no. Like you must have a teddy bear. <laughs> it says in the sun like last year. Oh, no, 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 we have no, no, no. to. I tell you what I'm gonna do. I tell you what I'm gonna do. Wait you gotta have a teddy bear, and before you go in the water, your teddy bear has got to have flotation device for himself. No way. All right. No, I still don't see a teddy bear. This is in lieu of a teddy bear. We are going to give this man a. Oh. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. 
You need one for everybody. All right, I have a task that you must perform in lieu of not having had your teddy bear. Okay. All right. This teddy bear went down the Missouri River in the Omaha race. <laughs> All right. Went to the Pacific Ocean, okay, in Long Beach, the Long Beach race, okay. And in Port Townsend, whatever the name of that water was, <laughs> he's been there. Okay? okay? All right. Now, your assignment then for the rest of this race is to take charge of this teddy bear. Okay. Okay? He's got to have his eye protection and his flotation device and everything. Okay. And he's got to come back safely so he can travel on more races. Okay. All right? So that's your duty. to choose an appropriate name that will then belong to this Jerry, Eddie. Hey, throw this in the garbage bag up okay. front. Okay. <laughs> 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 no, thank you. And, uh, what else do you need? Um, a, a sausage biscuit. Oh, okay. Two. Two sausage biscuits. Go on. Hi. How are you doing? Hi. Again. Pop, two coffees? No coffee. No I'll coffee? one coffee. All, All right. Some cream of sugar? Yep. Thank you is everybody in wardrobe oh. yes. yeah that down there all right emergency exit <laughs> hurry it's sinking all right sobriety test right Pretty good, okay. Uh, put your right arm out and your left foot up and shake it all about. Cool. This thing. Now, can you move this fast? <laughs> Some say it helps to be just a little unbalanced to take part in such a thing as a kinetic sculpture race. Hey, I just want everybody out there at home, don't try this. <laughs> when I get back, when this thing's all over and I get back into the real world, I'm going to go to the best therapist that money can't buy, and I'm going to get that guy to teach me how to say no. <laughs> no. Ladies and gentlemen, our glorious founder. Perfect racing weather. <laughs> you know, where else can you get texture when you race like we get here? We do, every once in a while we have fun with sunshine, but most of the time we have great racing weather. <laughs> oh, it goes with the outfit. <laughs> See, we're driving the swan. And so to go along with the feminine outfit of the swan, we have to go for drag. <laughs> I have some stockings that I'll put on later. And garter belts and all. But that's where we're at. You're fast. Wow. Very fast. It's fun. Yeah. I can't believe how much fun this young thing is. Oh, well, you know, it's one of those days. Let me cut a stroke, I'll be fine. <laughs> I'm June Moxon of the Flycicle. Actually, Elflyra of the Flycicle. And this is Beth, and this is Judy. We're the maggots. Yes, aren't we gorgeous? <laughs> We're actually just flying through the courts. We ace the course. Ace. <laughs> ace the course. Yes. Lots right. of glory. Which that means totally under our own power. Now, rumor has it that no one in this crowd, anyway, has ever seen a fly sink. So, we think we have the water pretty much under control, but who knows? We could end up in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> Glorious day for a bay crossing, wouldn't you say, Norma Jean? Absolutely. Absolutely. And when she says absolutely, she means absolutely. We're the Sunny Ranger Chariot! Yeah! 
One brave member of Zuzu's Flying Circus readying up for the water. Oh, hey. Oh, you guys Great bribes this time. year. Balloons. Great bribes. You like balloons? Something called rocket fuel. I'm not sure what it is, but I'll have it tested. In the meantime, have fun. Well, now that we've got the pig wet, let's see how the swan does into the Humboldt Bay and through the field of man-eating clams. Will this be the swan song for the swan song? I think not. They came from out of town and went into the bay. Ah, oh, it looks like these guys have done this before. One of the more technologically advanced machines in this race. This ought to be easy. You think these guys will make it across the bay? Of course, they're ducks, aren't they? Last year it was Nightmare of the Iguana. This year, Little Ducky. Next year, who knows what Yakima Products is going to come up with. What I'm wondering at this point is, did everybody do proper water testing before the race? Apparently not. Here is our illustrious U.S. Coast Guard doing what they do best. Of course, out here on the bay, the currents can be quite treacherous, which brings us to the drift law. We went over that earlier, or did we? Here, June Moxon takes her flycycle into the bay. Notice, if you will, the patented paddle wheel water propulsion system, along with those two pontoons, which are very important to keep her out of the bay, without which she would sink like a rock. Speaking of advanced water propulsion systems, check out this one on the SS NADS from the U.S. Navy. Here's the craw dudes again. A beautifully advanced machine with no sense of direction. Look at it, around in circles. Hey, stop that. You're chasing that official. How will you feel if you were being chased by a 20-foot long crawdad? Here's hot stuff, the red hot chili pepper, into the bay and... 
Wait a minute. Somebody want to look under that thing? He's not even getting wet. Is that fair? Now this is more like it. Glory doesn't come free. You've got to suffer for it. Anybody for a little stewed carrots in salt water sauce? Well, you're gonna get it anyway. Here goes the carrot chariot into the bay. Do you recognize that flotation system from anywhere? Now, Grandpa here has been a part of the kinetic sculpture race for years. He started out not with a sculpture, but by flying a kite. And that has evolved into Grandpa's flying machine. Now we'll see if it's Grandpa's floating machine. Contact, and we're ready to go. This is actually a product of Ken Beidelman's parents, Ken Beidelman's dad there at the front seat, ready to see if the tough old bird can be a tough old swimming bird. Full flaps, and in we go. Many varied and sundry creations have taken part in this world-famous kinetic sculpture race. And each year, the attraction grows. More and more, this human-powered trek from Arcata to Ferndale attracts spectators and participants alike for 24 years, breathing new life into the economic health of Humboldt County. I think these guys watch a little bit too much of MacGyver with all that duct tape and rubber and stuff. This is the Eulika Express. And you leak a little bit too much. Now this incredible device is called coming and going. We've seen her coming. Now, we'll see her going. Teamwork, 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 gentlemen. Pedal that thing in and... Well, um, oh, it's not working. Uh, whoa! Will you look at what mean old Mr. Gravity did? Just as we have gone into the bay, we must come back out. Here is the swan song, coming out of the bay and entering into that quagmire that we call mud on the South Jetty for a rest period at Camp Calistoga. Now what is this? It looks like the attack on Normandy. No, it's just the Yakima quacks making their way out of the water and into the crud. Oh boy, these spectators put up with a lot. You know, I think there ought to be a glorious Spectators Award for kinetic sculpture races in years to come. If at first you don't succeed, try something else. They've gone from pedals to paddles with hot stuff.
the Sunny Bray School's Carrot Chariot is known for their big pit crew. Here they are getting a little help from their friends out of the bay. This is Chickens Can't Swim. Well, apparently they can. Here's they came from out of town, getting a little help from in town. And these guys seem to be having more than just a little trouble motivating. But they soon get it together. The American gladiators making their way out of the bay over the mud. And the PR7 Stealth. Here's a little example of witchcraft stirring the brew. This looks like an infantile effort. And here, as an example of Back to the Future's high-tech front drive system. And here's an example of a lower-tech front drive system. And here's an example of a no-tech front drive system. Every possible contingency is thought about here at the Kinetic Sculpture Race. A medical first aid station for those coming right out of the bay. And of course, water is necessary. Here's a man taking part in some free Calistoga water. It's sing around the campfire. And there's the carrot chariot again. Lots of cheers, but no pilots. And so ends day number two. A good night's rest, and we're ready for day number three, the final day, the Day of Reckoning, which takes our kinetic sculpture racers out of Camp Calistoga, past the Lighthouse Ranch, on out the jetty, and to Point Drizzle through water, around to Cock Robin Island through even more water, up and down Slimy Slope, and on their way to Arlinda Corners, and the finish line, the end of the kinetic sculpture race, 1993. Sounds easy, doesn't it? Well, it ain't. As you can see, the terrain is not exactly what we would call a county-maintained road. Here we see the Calistoga Swan Song attempting to negotiate through the muck. And not doing a bad job of it either. 
I can see he's in his formal gown for the awards ceremony later on in Ferndale. Here's the fly sickle carrying on through the crud with a little bit of help from a maggot. Here are the American gladiators. Here we see Hot Stuff making his way through the mucky stuff on his way to the glory at the finish line in Ferndale. Hot Stuff designer Alan Krauss utilizes the back-to-back -back pilot formation. And the kinetic racing action never stops. Zuzu's kinetic circus rising above it all and barely making it across the jetty to the first wet hurdle. They came from out of town, seems to be negotiating out in the boondocks with no trouble at all. And the U.S. Coast Guard, a little out of their element on dry land. And here it is, the racing action, the Calistoga Swan Song, taking over third, taking over second, and finally, eventually taking over the lead in the Kinetic Sculpture Race 1993. Here some furry spectators are taking a break out by the sea. Time now for a quiet interlude. Then back to the racing action. Well, Mother Duck, where are all your little baby ducks? Danger! Will Robinson! Alien approaching! Alien approaching! This is the entry from Hoopa, California. The Road Warrior. Camouflaged by the bushes. Here comes a chili pepper on wheels. What next? Here's a meeting of the Kinetic Yacht Club, ready to put them in the drink again. Back to the grueling racing action, battling for a position out front. Temporarily, it is the Mosquito Hawk followed closely behind by Plum Crazy, and they're both trying to catch the dog. Onward to the glory! This is the Blue Lake Steelhead Runback from Blue Lake, California, as if you didn't know. Taking a little break out in the sun before you get back in the water again. Another water crossing on their way to the glory in Ferndale. The Calistoga Swan Song under a full head of steam. And Mama Duck and all her baby ducks following close behind. Getting ever closer to the dreaded slimy slope. Here's hot stuff that, now floating red hot chili pepper, having a few navigational difficulties out there in the current. A little paddle will do. It's better than being up a creek without one, I guess. These guys might look high and dry, 
but whoa, look out. Uh-oh, uh-oh, she's sinking. Come on, baby, come on. Yes! Fusion powered and underway on the way to the glory. Uh, Mom, I think the baby's wet. Getting a little help from some friendly Klingons. hot butter and some Louisiana Cajun music would go real good right now, wouldn't it? Some of these currents out here really take their tolls on these kinetic sculpture racers. Looks like an amphibious assault as the kinetic sculpture racers make their way through the water and back up to the legal push area that is right out of the water there due to all that mud and slimy stuff. And speaking of slimy, slimy slope isn't far away and this is going to be a lot of fun. Come on, ugly, you can do it. Slimy going from here on out. Darling Duck making her way slowly up the slime. Notice the special patented mud and crud tires. I got major bribes for pushing the legal push line down there because their pontoon kept getting stuck. And so they were passing us ducks and Dave kept inching the legal push line more and more into the river. It was too cool. Well, I gotta find a phone. Victoria made it all the way down to Slimy Slope and wallowed in with those guys. It was wonderful. I was in hog heaven. How many? Woo! That's pretty good rut in its own right. Hi, Mom. Everybody knew it was coming. That's right, the inevitable and dreaded slimy slope. Pedal, pedal, pull, pedal, anything, just get her up that slippery hill.
<laughs> with Pete's arms. With... Yeah. All right. Good. All right. Glad yeah. you have those gloves. Just the at the beginning. Oh, One oh two. Anybody got a cold cow still there? <laughs> There's some water up front up here, I think. Oh, Is there? Yeah. There was earlier. All right. Yeah. Clear. No! These guys are plum crazy. You'll hear them before you see them. Yep, I'm talking about the Carrot Chariot. Carrot! Oh, I got carroted away. And here's June Moxon acing it in the fly sickle. When you're an ace, you can't climb out of that machine and you cannot accept a push from anyone unless you're in a legal push area, which she's uh, entering soon here. It's up that old slimy thing there. Come on, June, you can do it. Maybe you ought to enlist a little bit of help from your maggots. It took three days to cover 38 miles, but we're here, the kinetic climax, that supreme exalted glorious moment, the finish line in Ferndale. Here's a young man who quite by accident found himself in the kinetic sculpture race instead of a mountain bike race in Oregon. The Sapple 02 left the starting line at the Arcata Plaza with her crew looking like a recruiter's poster. Three prime examples of military spit and polish. Creases straight, clean cut, clean shaven in a clean machine. But kinetic madness threw all that military spit and polish overboard. Here's a typical married couple. Couldn't even agree on the name. This is marital bliss. No, make that miss. There's that red hot chili pepper on wheels again. It's hot and it's fast. Here's Alan and Mike Krause. Here's the kinetic kidney bean on their way to the glory. Piloted by Tim Richter, his daughter Celeste Richter, and a little help from Jim Lytle. Tim's been at it for eight years now in the kinetic sculpture race. Here's the tough old birds coming in from what looks like a gear up landing. But it's okay, these aces will do it again next year and the bird will fly again. This is Kenneth and Annabelle Beidelman. From a tough old bird to a stealth bomber, this is the PR7 stealth, undetected but over the finish line. And here's two men's interpretation of a woody. I always thought it was a station wagon. This is Theodore Thunderbridge's up close. Here are the all-ace Yakima Quacks. Mother Duck in front, Bruce Hamilton and Ken Beidelman at the helm. Len Meyer drives Gooey Duck, while Sarah Mitchell pilots Darlin' Duck. Bruce LaBelle is at the helm of Lucky Duck, and the Yakima Quacks' Dirty Duck is driven by Dave Hayes. Bob Thompson's at the control for Louie Duck, and Ugly Duck is driven by Steve Cole.
Onward through the cheering masses and on to the glory, here's Grandpa's Flying Machine. Now these guys were babies throughout the whole race. This is infantile effort, finally finishing it. Here's the Mosquito Hawk racing ahead and over the line. This is Cow Cow Boogie. That's right, another machine from the mind of Dwayne Flatmo. And here is, from Hoopa, California, the Road Warrior. And this is Dragon Boat, dragging it across the line and still in one piece. Here's coming and going, simultaneously. Going for the glory, coming in to the finish line. Or is it the reverse of that? And here is the U.S. Navy's SS Nads. Look at those Nads go. Flat tire and all. These men are dedicated glory hounds. And this is back to the future. Flux capacitor still flexing. Great Scott, Marty. They're on their way, just inches away from the glory at the finish line in Ferndale. This is Zuzu's Kinetic Circus, or what's left of it, arriving in more pieces than it left in. Now for the bestowment of honors, the Kinetic Awards. The Poor Pitiful Me Award is bestowed upon Zuzu's Kinetic Circus for whining above and beyond the call of good human sympathy. The First in Speed Award goes to none other than rookie Dennis Coyne in the Calistoga Swan Song. The First in Speed Award, naturally, for being the fastest. This is a race, you know. To the first machine to break down after it starts in Arcata, we bestow the Dinosaur Award. This is earned by, I don't know, you name it, or how does it won't go, you fix it sound. If art imitates life, then June Moxon's sculpture does a great fly impersonation. Therefore, the perfect winner of the First in Art Award for her ace-rated flycicle with optional twin maggots. The Grand Overall Award, most exalted and presented for the sculpture pilot team that's just plain superior to everything else, excelling in all categories. And this year's Grand Champion Award was spawned from the Yakima Quacks. It is none other than the imperially exalted Lucky Duck. Now this one's painfully average. The Blue Lake Steelhead Runback wasn't first or last, but placed dead in the middle, so he receives the Mediocre Award, which is really your average dull black 1957 four-door Rambler. Baby, this car would bore a librarian. The most technologically advanced sculpture shall receive the coveted First in Engineering Award, and this year the Calistoga Craw Dudes win it hands down. The Bogus Award goes to the machine that's the most pleasing or least painful to the ears. This year's Bogus goes to Eulika Express, the sculpture that sings better than it swims. Proper losing technique deserves recognition. Years of failure is necessary for world-class losing. This year's three-way tie for the Loser Award is Grandpa's Flying Machine, the Rabbit Aquabats, and the Kinetic Kidney Beans. The KXGO Award bestowed along with 500 simoleons to the sculpture that wears the most blatant display of the radio station's call letters. Many tried, two of them tied, so KXGO honors and shells out the cash to both Sushi and the Blue Lake Steelhead Runback. The Best Costume Award goes to American Gladiators for their epic impersonation of a reptile. Now only pit crew members have any chance at all at the Spirit Award, which is awarded to the crew most likely to brighten everyone's day without being asked. In short, the pit crew everyone pegs as the winner. And that crew is obviously the Carrot Chariot Pit Crew. Behold, as our glorious founder, Hobart Brown, becomes a pilot in this race after all. That is, after all, the obstacles have been conquered. Now that's 
kinetic thinking. The course is officially closed. They made it with one second to go. It's now 5.30. We're closing the course. Bye. Uh -huh. 